Good evening stream. Welcome to everybody. I am just getting things sorted out. I've got some stuff in the post today. So I've got uh, uh, some new uh, scraper tools or a new scraper tool. So I can replace the blunt one that I've got. When I can find what I've done with there it is. I might see if I can sharpen that one later, but not just at the moment. So I've got 12 cutters. Which now that I've put gloves on, I probably can't get in. Alright. Oh, it's fails. Take my gloves off. Hello Gaia, good evening, welcome to tonight's uh, stream. Nice to see you. Oh, they're in a nice bag. So I got things in the post, I got new things in the post today. I got these, uh, which are um, Uh, new cutters. Uh, if you recall, the night before last, I decided that uh, the one I had was blunt and absolutely uh, of no use. So I ordered some more so that uh, I can go back to using this since it seems like my uh, I blunted my scalp. Yep, that does go in a special way. Right, I need to change my glasses. Which means I need it to work out where I'd put them. So how are you doing today, Greya? At the moment, I am not sure whether I'm getting a headache or not. And I've just realised that the window over there slammed itself shut. So just bear with me a second. It's quite windy here and uh, sometimes the window will slam shut with the wind. And so it gets rather warm. So, yep, as I say, I got some goodies. So I got the scrapers. I also got some ink. So in theory, if I make a mistake, I can put black on it and uh, fix the problem. And I've got some other colours as well. Which I might try on this uh, particular piece. So I can try um, maybe doing some grass and then uh, and then going over with green. Yep, and that also reminds me at some point I must get some clear cut, some varnish fixative to go over the top of these, for which I will be using my airbrush. And the other thing I got today was another board and this is one board <laughs> uh, so that's SD board this <laughs> is uh, ampersand board it's somewhat thicker this is just a single board um, I'm holding it off screen but there you go one single board so it's really solid is that it'll hang by itself it what doesn't bend um, but the price of that is the same as 10 sheets of that so I've got one of these to try that will have some some special pictures on it probably of pussy cats but that will be for a later stream a uh, little bit of a dreary rainy day 
Um, it's been a bit odd for us. I mean, I was in, uh, I was in working in an office today, and uh, it was okay going into work this morning. I sort of went in at about half past seven, but then around about lunchtime, about twelve o'clock, it just absolutely bounced down. Did the rain? Um, I. I it wasn't. I was sort of looking out through the window and thought, I was thinking, I'm glad I brought an umbrella with me. But by the time I came to leave for, for home, it was bright sunshine and all the rain had gone. No, no evidence of it, and it's been nice ever since. Uh, goody surviving. Yeah. Well, you know, the tools so I can actually do something. Um, save me uh, using. Uh, I was about to say save me using a scalpel, but. I've actually got a feeling the scalpel blades are cheaper than these were. Uh, but the inks will be nice to have a play with. And, and the board, that, that will go into stock. But uh, as I say, that's that's probably for the next time we do scrape a board on stream. Um, that board from Ampersand, um, they describe it as museum quality, but um, it's supposed to be a really good board, so... I'm going to try it, but it's really expensive board. That just that one sheet is six in UK pounds, about six pounds. Whereas you get about well, these are um, work out at about I think it's about one pound odd each from S S D. But of course, the, I mean, you can see the difference. This is card that's you know like wood. It's almost it's it's a fibre board, I guess. But it's a, it's rather pricey stuff, so it's going to have to have um, some really excellent qualities, I think, uh, for me to try more than one. Um, difficulty, of course, will be that it might be you know, qualities that you recognise when you're an excellent artist. So I might not recognise them, but we'll see. I'm waiting for tomorrow. I've got some more. I've got some more, hopefully some more goodies arriving tomorrow. Um, I hope it's tomorrow, either tomorrow or the day after, but I've got some more rings um, arriving because I, I used up um, uh, quite a few yesterday. Um, was it yesterday? The other day, on the, yeah, yesterday on the stream. Um, which reminds me. I need to, I need to go, uh, tomorrow to go give that to the uh, the person that spoiled it. Um, otherwise, I'll be in trouble. But uh, I've also ordered some uh, ni is it niodinium? No, niobium, niobium rings. We'll see what they're like. They're anodized as well, but they're they're supposed to be a different sort of color and style. So I'm gonna have a play with those quite looking forward to that. What else did I order? Oh, I ordered some rubber rings as well. Um, bright yellow, because my wife likes bright yellow, but she doesn't like rubber rings. But um, I'm going to try, uh, maybe seeing if I can put some of the, well, I know you can, but seeing if I can put some of those into a bracelet so you can make one with that clasp. So, goodies to play with. And talking of playing, I better go on with doing Ah, uh, okay. So, we've got a thatched roof in. So now I've, I've put some stones in. So it's a case of doing stone stuff. So, uh, I, I dotted some of these in. Hmm. I thought it was dark in here just a second. <laughs> That's golly, I haven't put a light on. Uh, and that didn't help much. That helps more. There we go. Um, not got much to do. So I'm just reading back and just thinking you've not got much to do. 
Oh, the um, I don't know. No, nah, I'm not going to tease you. Um, but uh, I was about to say I'd love to have nothing to do. Actually, I wouldn't. I get really bored. So um, I envy you having the time available, uh, from which you could, if you wanted, to do lots of things. Oh. I'm just I'm um, gonna be have I scratched that one? I have, and it's really fine. Okay. It's now just kind of putting air texture into these. Um, kind of just make it up as I go along. You know, whilst I have that reference picture, I'm not about to, I'm not really trying to copy it in any shape or form, really. Yeah, uh, it's time to do some chip, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I suppose now's the opportunity to uh, try and turn chip carving into um, paid work. Which would be a nice uh, a nice thing to do if you uh, got the opportunity. Time to do some marketing. Um, I'm trying to think how to, what, just quite what to do with this. I would say it's kind of amazing the difference a new tool makes. It's, uh, it's really quite a sharp tip. I'm going to have to put concrete in between these as well somehow. Otherwise it's going to look uh, a little bit odd. I've not had much chance to watch more of those um, that, that, uh, that guy's chip carving but I've watched a couple of more videos. It's It still scares me a little bit. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, as, as you know, um, I, I do know the, you know the way in which the knives are being held are safe and things like that, but it still gives me the eebie-jeebies, um, seeing the amount of force that gets put on the on that blade that he when he's doing it. Nice thing I guess about doing stones like this is I can try out lots of different techniques because you know for for creating marks I mean there's a scratching and there's almost like little tiny dots in practice the little tiny scratches but um, just to see how things come out. I'm not sure if um, I'm subconsciously picking subjects that I can 
you know, either try things out or where mistakes don't matter a great deal or whether it's sort of just um, what's the other way of looking at it um, just generally mistakes don't matter a great deal if you see what I mean they're just you know you've um, Because of the, the variety that's inherent in the image that I've picked, um, I'm just thinking, hey, I can, you know, it's 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 useful. This, it's you know, it's it's um, a thatched roof, so you know, it reads. If I don't quite get all the things lined up, or you know, I get sl slight patterning on it, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm I'm kind of wondering whether I'm subconsciously picking the images because of that, or um, I'm just happen to think of that because the image suits that sort of thing and I think oh I don't have to you know I don't have to take as much care's the wrong word I don't have to be as skilled uh, to do that but that's kind of coincidental um, yeah oh yes no I, I, I understand I mean it's I, I just on some of the earlier streams when I've had my um, carving knives out um, it's the same thing that you, uh, when you're holding a piece which is why when I'm holding it I always use the my um, the Kevlar glove on my left hand because I hold a piece with my left hand because I know I'm not going to cut my right hand it's going to be the odd slip or the finger that's not quite in the right place or just something which causes a knife to just slip slightly and, it, and I know it's going to be in my left hand that does it the same as you've just mentioned there um, yeah that's um, and uh, yeah it's because I mean well you, you use you don't you well you it's the same with carving as I'm guessing from what I've seen with the chip carving is you don't use your arm muscles you use your hand or you use your finger muscles you close you close your hand more or less, don't you, or, or your uh, your wrist. You don't use the whole arm muscles, and you don't if you're carving properly. You don't use the whole arm muscles either, because that's when you get the uncontrolled movement. Because you, your arm doesn't stop if you're just curling your fingers, you just stop. But um, yeah, no, it's uh, I, I used to work in, well when, when I was a kid, long time ago. I used to work in a supermarket, and we used to open boxes with box cutters essentially just a, a handle with a razor blade in the end of it and um, you until, well unless you were told and, and it was whenever anybody new came in you just hand them this box cutter which has got a razor blade on and you'd see him sort of uh, you know, getting well both hands out of the way and they're sort of tentatively cutting with a with with a box cutter across the top and and once you once you were taught shall we say uh, and he had the experience it would just be bang 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 round four sides of a box lift the lid off and in about three seconds flat you'd, you'd cut the box open for the very same thing because you used to just hold your run hold the, the box cutter in your hand when you, you you put your thumb on the top of the box and just run your hand around it and you can't cut yourself but everybody thinks you can because it's so close to your thumb and as you know it doesn't happen yeah kitty cakes 55 good evening welcome to the studio this evening nice to see you I trust you are doing well Briar and I are just um, well not exactly recounting horror stories it's more a case of uh, recounting why you don't get horror stories doing chip carving and normal carving um, yeah but even then when you're in when you're doing curved cuts you're still not using your arm muscles really are you you're just using it more as a pivot point uh, again so it's it's still sort of the same thing and I suppose if you were using your arm muscles in any sort of power you're pulling it towards you, you know. You, you I, here I am making a, a movement that you can't see, but you're sort of, you know, rotating so that you're bringing your arm back against your your side to lock it, and so 
that's the limit of the movement you're going to get out of it anyway. And again, it, it's it's controlled. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I understand the, the stomach muscles, um, Graya. Um, yeah, from your shoulder, it, it, it's stabilising your car. It, it, when um, a little while ago, I had some skin surgery, uh, sort of just um, had some. Um, potential marks removed from my chest uh, when I was doing the dragon and the the night when I came for the next two or three nights after I came home from those uh, from the operation which was just local anaesthetic type stuff I couldn't carve for that very reason Ju just even using my hands it's, it surprised me just how much you stabilize your body with your with your stomach muscles your core muscles and I couldn't carve because it, when I tense those muscles up, it hurt quite a bit. And um, you know, because it was pulling on the wounds, and it really surprised me. Um, and the shoulder, yeah, I I have to make sure I, especially in this, if I'm not standing, I have to make sure I actually sit back in chairs when I'm carving, because I have a tendency to, to to get closer, and lean over the top of it, and boy, do your shoulder. Tops of your shoulders and top of your back ache after a while. I'm still not very good at consciously relaxing back, but <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's very similar to the sort of some of the movements I make when I'm um, carving with the chisels. Is that, and it's something I well certainly I like to stress when I'm doing doing it for. And people are watching you know you do not never use your arm muscles to carve with if you're using the big hand chisels you know with a 18 inch long handle uh, and you're carving some really heavy duty wood you might well do that but you've got you don't have your hands anywhere near that tip when you do that <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's uh, it, it certainly surprised me. Did that the uh, the stomach muscle thing? I didn't think it was going to be a problem at all to me um, on that stream, and yet uh, I couldn't uh, couldn't do it at all. I did try for about five minutes, and then gave up. So this is uh, Ed, Ed Giddy Cakes, anybody else that's um, watching, if you're not familiar with what I'm doing here, it's uh, Colts. Well, I don't actually know what the art form is called. It, it, it kind of gets called Scraper Board, although um, that's a trade name. Um, scratch Board, Scraper Board, mm -mm. Same thing, but uh, two different uh, different trade names. But what it what it is it essentially is uh, this particular medium is, in this one it's card, but there's some sort of backing. Um, then you have a coloured layer. In this particular case, it's uh, porcelain clay, which is which is white, uh, quite a thin layer. Um, but you can also have silver foil, gold foil. Um, holographic plastic lots of things and then there's Indian ink put over the top usually black but you you can get other colors as well blue red things like that or even color your own um, and then you just use any form of sharp tool to scratch through the Indian ink uh, to create the image that you're after and depending on how you do the scratches or the, how you do the marks you get different textures you get different looks uh, to something and the more 
the more or the well, lines, dots, however you've created it, the more you put in a certain area, the lighter it looks. The larger you make the marks, the lighter it looks. So you're balancing these off against each other uh, to produce the uh, the image and the shape, range, of shape, range of shades that you're, uh, you're after. Yeah, that's um, that's true. Uh, quite, I'd completely forgotten about that, but you are correct. That is um, that is something we used to do, and and literally almost. I mean, I don't know if it was at school them imitating these things because I don't know how long you know this sort of stuff has been manufactured or people have made it. Um, but yeah, I can remember with the wax uh, with the wax crayons. You know, different layers, you know, as you say, scribbling layers of wax crayons and then scribbling black over the top and then scraping, scraping away. And the deeper you scrape, the different colours you got. I'd completely forgotten about that, but you're perfectly, perfectly right. Hey there, hmm, I don't know. I'm not about to start experimenting with that just yet. Maybe sometime we'll have an experiment with something like that. I suppose technically then you could always do it with just you know, melt wax, coloured wax I guess, and with a paintbrush, paint it on so you get thin layers like that. Interesting. Something maybe to experiment with in the future. I can remember uh, making art at... Uh, what would it call it? junior school in the UK? So what the, would that be? Sort of a second level school in in uh, other countries. Um, taking wax crayons and a candle, lit candle, melting the end of the wax crayon and then daubing it on to create art uh, pictures. Because I can the one I always remember doing is uh, a woodland scene. Um, so by you know the daubing of the wax on, you you got like leaf patterns and sort of you know like single leaves almost. So you could create quite a lot of texture and leaf leaf textures like that, and it didn't take much to smear it slightly to get uh, tree trunks. Hmm. Maybe we'll try something like that again. Yeah, you, you have a, a, sort of recall the thing you mean, getting, as you say, nice effects. These days, they uh, you can with you know buying this stuff, you can get rainbow coloured. It's a rainbow plastic, is the middle there. Um, but you know, I suppose you get it's, it's, it, it wouldn't be a case of you know the further you go through, you get a different colour, but different areas you get different colours, similar sort of thing kind of intrigued maybe maybe I'll get some cheap cranes and uh, quite a lot of craft shops well cheap I was thinking cheap cranes but quite a lot of craft shops um, have coloured wax as well because there's an art form called uh, on, it's on caustic art which is uh, wax generally you use like a heated iron to, to do it with a little like a little miniature clothes iron um, to to make pictures and you put the wax onto the tip of the iron I think I can't really as I looked at it I thought hey that's interesting but I didn't really want to try but so maybe the uh, some of the craft shops that sell some coloured low temperature wax I have to try might have to have a go at that at some point there's an interesting thing. I ought to write these ideas down, shouldn't I? So that I can remember them in the future.
Yeah. Guess that's true. Yeah, that's perfectly true. Maybe something I say, well, maybe it's something we'll have to have a try. Might have, well, I was going to say, uh, I was about to say, I may have to use sort of, sort of fairly thick card as a backing, but there again, I've got some hardboard, so, uh, which is all, you know, like the practice pieces for the pyrography on. I've got quite a few sheets of hardboard, so that would, you know, that'll work as a background, uh, just to put, uh, you know, wax on. Interesting. Uh, I wonder, my wife used to make candles actually, so um, I wonder if she's got any wax, any of her wax dyes left, because if she has, we, I know I know there's a few kilos of wax laying about. Um, so it might be possible even to do something like, um, take a, uh, a small paintbrush and actually just paint with wax, that would be an interesting thing. Just kind of leads on from well not leads on but it's a sideways shift on what you were saying there gray and i'm talking and not doing again all these interesting ideas you see too many ideas not enough time so if you feel like doing any and streaming it yourself, uh, great. go right ahead. Um, I'd probably uh, be interested in watching. Candle making is pretty... Yeah, it is actually. Um, and you've got all sorts of interesting uh, ways of creating candles as well. Um, I mean, there's the straight candles. They're just candles meant for burning. Um, but then you can get candles... Or you can make candles, for example, in, in rubber moulds. So you could have a candle of a small statue. You know, you you, you might, let's say, carve a, a statue, uh, uh, make a rubber mould out of it, then uh, pour wax into that mould to get um, a wax statue. And if you put a wick in it, it becomes a candle. That's the only difference between a wax statue and a, a candle is the fact a candle's got a wick. Um, and then, you, 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 deft as it sounds, you can paint wax quite easily. So you can actually then... Uh, it's a good way of creating sort of multiple... Uh, sort of multiple uh, statues, you know, and you can personalise them and all sorts of things. Uh, and, of course, the, the other sort of very nice thing you can do is... Um, you can carve candles. Don't know if you've ever seen that or seen any of those, but they'll take something essentially like well, often it's often like um, a star shape, but but in a pillar form. So it's it's if you look straight down, it's a star, but it's it's tall. And then uh, the way in which they do that is they then start dipping that into coloured waxes. So you start to create coloured wax shells. Uh, all the meantime, when you're doing that, you're warming up the whole candle, and then you can take a knife, and you can do things like slice down a point, and you can, you know, uh, curl it, for example, to create like leaf shapes. You can, you know, take some some of the clay moulding tools, like wire loops, cut into the candle, uh, twist it, and then stick it back in, so you get like a candy cane twirl effect. And they can get some really fantastic patterns out of that. Um, the only problem is that it's quite actually ha hard to um, to find a good way of uh, heating the, the mul multiple colours of wax that you want. Because generally speaking, they need to be quite tall. So copper, pa uh, copper wax pans are relatively expensive things. Uh, and then you've got to have a water bath that's big enough to carry as many colours as you want and you can't just put them in a pan because you can't have the copper wax carrier touching the bottom of the pan 
because the idea of the water is it can, you can't overheat the wax you can't set it on fire but if you if the bottom of the uh, the copper carrier touches the bottom of the pan it can heat directly and you can actually set fire to your wax and um No, it's not. I, I enjoy it. I mean, it's all part of it. And, you know, I, I think it's all part of the stream. OK, I'm not progressing as much as I should, perhaps. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I enjoy it. And there's, you know, interesting ideas come out of it like that. And you reminded me about wax carving. It's something my wife really wanted to do, actually, was that that specific type of wax carving. You can't easily carve you can't easily carve wax when it's cold because it tends to crack and shatter. Um, you can get over th that a little bit by using a different mix of wax. Um, there's a, it's an additive, but it's it's like a, a wax, a different type of wax called stirene, which you can add to uh, candles. And the more you put into wax, the more that you put into synthetic wax, the I'll say softer, but the more sort of resilient it is to being carved, even cold. So, um, but, uh, well, when when there's a bigger studio, maybe maybe we might even get my wife streaming, doing um, carving candles or making candles, because she she really liked doing that. I'll have to see if we can get her back into doing it. Fear Reaper, good evening, welcome to the studio this evening. I think I probably should actually do a little bit because um, if anybody drops in and just looks and perhaps doesn't have the sound turned up, it looks like there's nothing going on. <laughs> but no, feel free to uh, to keep um, talking, you know, doing that sort of thing. I'll try and remember not to stop, but um, it, uh, I, I, it's, it's great. I like that sort of interactivity, uh, Gryer. Don't worry about it. Um, Tulfa. Actually, that's just reminded me. And um, uh, there's, um, there's a guy that I've seen carving. Uh, sorry, doing wax sculpture. Um, it, it's, it's like a clay wax. It, 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 or he seemed to be on every night. I don't, haven't looked for a while, um, because he tends to be silent. And I, as I mentioned before, I don't like silent streams. Um, but it's especially formulate formulated wax that sort of reacts like clay. But when it's warm, it you can you know you can remould it and things. He uses a heated tool uh, to do like smoothing and things like that. So. You know, I suppose potentially, you know, with um, with the uh, uh, pyrography machine, you need a fairly large tool so it doesn't get too hot um, with the tool turned round. I mean, I had like, if you, is that it? You know, this one that's actually, I won't get it out, but this one's sort of like knife shaped. You need a fairly large one, I think, but turn it down. You could perhaps use some, some of the pyrographic tools and things like the flat shaders. Of course, they're flat. Uh, they're quite large and flat. They'd make quite smooth, uh, good smoothing tools. As long as they're cool enough. For your Reaper, you've finally got the render done. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's quite a lot of work. Well, it's quite a long time, isn't it, for uh, 350 frames? Or did you do some more? Uh, okay, I've not seen that, uh, Gray. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm sort of interested in sculpting, but I kind of don't like the mess and um, who was it, it was uh, CJ C just 13 I think 
I was talking to uh, one time. He's he's a streamer that um, stra uh, he streams oil based clay mod modeling. He does some other things as well, but um, mainly he was doing a lot of oil oil based clay, and that's um, supposed to be relatively clean. Um, and he keeps he keeps the um, the clay somewhat so um, soft by keeping it warmed. So I can see, uh, you know, warming the tools would help in that respect as well. I'm not sure it, it's because this wax one is like a grey substance. Um, it did have a stream title, something like, like um, you know, one model a day or um, intention to do sort of 365 or something. I can't, I can't actually remember, um, but. He seems to have you know, a tool with a wire on it for doing certain things. And then I know he's got a, a pan which he keeps the... So I don't know if it's, boiled, it's got hot water in it or something, but he quite often you see him with a, take a, some, some of the stuff out of it and mould it and then put it onto the, um, the model. But it's like a grey grey substance was that. Uh, 350 frames on 30 frames per second um, uh, is that because uh, YouTube has um, uh, upped it to 30 frames per second from 24 <laughs> or did you decide to uh, actually do it at 30 now you're okay um Fear Reaper, uh, doing that. You are. Um, you don't. Uh, you don't abuse it, so that's okay. I'm just gonna have a look. Twelve seconds. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, let me just stop that playing because I don't want you to play the next one. That is absolutely amazing. Um, may I have permission to use it? I'd, I'd love to use that for something. I'm not sure what, but um, may I have permission to use that, please? I'll write to you and I'll quite happily you know, uh, give you um, credit for it. Uh, that is absolutely um, wonderful. Um, if anybody in, in stream wants to click that, I have it's it's a safe link. <laughs> um, wow, thank you very much. I'll I'll, I'll write to you. I'll I'll drop you a, a, a Twitch PM um, theory, but just I, I like to make sure everything's just uh, you know above board. So, but thank you for the um, for the permission. It is it's very nice, is that? We'll watch it again. It took it took me about two letter two or three letters before I realised that. Hang on a minute, that's starting to say my name. <laughs> And then, uh, then, then it got on. I, I like the sort of burst at the end as well. Thank you. I've got a big grin now. Hmm. I don't quite know what to say, but you know, thank, thank you for doing it. Um. And taking taking that time because you know it, it, um, you know, with over the past sort of three days, I sort of know how much time has gone into uh, to doing that. Um, we'll have to. Uh, have to mention it when um, when any other uh, streamers come online, and you know, you you maybe. Uh, 
you might get some uh, commissions there uh, for your Reaper. Jaxel, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. That's uh, that's doing that grey uh, grey wax. What it's it's um, I I did look it up uh, and it, it uh, it's sort of a a formulation that some uh, I think some uh, sculptor has put together um, to get over some of the problems that you know he perceived air drying or oil based water based or air based uh, oil based clay had and. Uh, it looked really interesting to try, but it only seemed to be available in the States and seemed to be quite expensive as, as well. So, but uh, I kind of watch, I do watch him from time to time because it is interesting. But, hmm. Nobody's ever made me an animation or anything like that before. I don't quite know what to say. It's still... Oh, thank you, uh, thank you, Fiery. But just knowing that you've, it's motivated you to do something uh, more in art, I don't mean something, but just you know, to to get back into doing some of the things that you like doing is uh, that's uh, that's nice enough. But thank you. Um, yeah, I I never got as far as, um, as as looking at things like field of view or whatever. Of course, yeah, as soon as you start to see your own name, it does tend to draw your attention, but. Um, Ah, I like it. I like it. I'm, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't have any skill in it to be able to offer anything particularly um, constructive. Um. Just on these breaks, just trying to do. I don't know, all sorts of different scrape te textures. I just want them not to all look the same. Whether or not that's going to turn out to be a bad decision, I don't know. But um, I mean, the, the cottage is a stone cottage so you know no two stones are the same so but equally if I'd done sort of a, a fine scratching technique I can you know like like with the moon thing you can just add a little bit extra to change to change the shape and, and things like that so it's uh, Yeah, a guessing game, I guess, as to what's going to be the better. Mm. 
better way of doing things. Yes, for the next um, next thing is going to be um, now that you know something like that turned out really well is to uh, get you um, streaming doing that sort of thing. Or is that still a step too far at the moment? <laughs> getting bored doing those um, stones. Um, let's see about, I don't know, can we put some mortar between them in some way? I still don't quite know what to say. Um, switch plates. Um, yeah. Uh, an interesting one. From a pyro, uh, pyrographic care. Uh, just a minute, guys. Computer support stuff. Uh, I'm back guys, just my wife um, with a computer support question. I've just by uh, uh, Faye Reaper, I've just shown her the um, the animation. Her words were wow and brilliant. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, step too far at the moment Faye Reaper. Oh, okay. That's not bad for a first model. In two or three years it definitely isn't bad for... Um, which plate's pyrographic? Yeah, I'm trying to think what what um, is like. Yeah, because I mean that's um, it would be nice to be able. To, you know, there's um buying things like the scraper board or the scratch board there, um, which 
uh, was bought basically courtesy of um, Lady, is it Lady Medaya, who um, was did a very generous donation to the uh, to the studio, and uh, it, you know it's being able to sell some small pieces would uh, would certainly help with doing things like that. Um, and especially with, um, you know, with with the chain work as well, because chains are the chains are quite sorry the rings are uh, they're cheap, but they're expensive because you need lots of them. Um, so they're sort of cheap each, <laughs> you know, like the one one and a half UK pence uh, each for you know one ring. But when you use a hundred of them or two hundred of them, it soon adds up. Hmm. Team Hospital, good evening. Nice to uh, see you this evening. Um. Interesting. You've got uh, you've got a fair uh, a fair range there. It's. Um, Difficulty for uh, for me, of course, is that um, I'm UK based, so I'd have to find, I ideally find a UK supplier. And of course, our switch plates actually are a different shape uh, to that. I'm actually trying to remember if they've got to be um, certified in some way. We don't use switch plates in the same way. Well, we don't use switch plates in the same way. Um, the in the UK, the switch plate and the switch, uh, the switching gear, are generally a single unit. Uh, I know over there in the states, you you take. Oh, I'm assuming the states, but uh, that side. And in fact, a lot of countries, they take the back box, they put the switch unit, uh, the switching gear into the back box, and then the plate goes over the top. But in in the UK, it does it's not usually done that way. It might be done for sort of um, big um, multi-switch unit installations, but generally in sort of homes, uh, it's uh, it's with the switch gear and the and the switch plate are molded together. But what we sometimes get is switch surrounds. So there's a um, Effectively, what you do is it's it, it, it's got a big cutout in the middle, if you like, and the switch the switch plate goes in the middle and sandwiches uh, it, the surround uh, against the wall. Uh, they're often the the you can get plastic ones, which are kind of marketed as uh, to keep the wallpaper or the wall around the switch uh, clean, because you know you've got dirty hands. You put your hand on the wall to throw the switch, and your hands are touching the wall, not the switch plate. Uh, so they're often called so wall protectors or things like that, but it's a similar sort of idea. Mm. But yeah, I mean that was one reason uh, for trying, you know, uh, trying that door hanger. A little bit of a uh, different sort of thing, but just to uh, something with a short time period that would be attractive in terms of not being too expensive, because um, some of the other art forms. Uh, unfortunately, the hours add up. Even if I take out the time when I'm just not doing anything like at the moment, so I'll get back to doing some more.
Think about that. Uh, um, Karim four five Z. How old am I? Um, I'm as old as my tongue and a little bit older than my teeth. But that's probably not what you meant. Um, I'm I'm over 50, so I'm an old man. Uh, I'm in my 50s. Uh, okay. The ash one's certainly a light. That's an interesting one. I'm wondering if they're. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll look at that one uh, a little bit later. Uh, it's. Uh, thank you for uh, for finding that. For me, that's uh, most kind of you, uh, um, Graham. I'm not sure. I, I, I think they're moulded in rather than, uh, you know, the, the made factory made that way rather than being separate units, if that makes sense. But um, which means they're probably varnished. So I'd have to look into it, but it's uh, it's an interesting one. It is quite an interesting one. Hmm, lots of ideas. Couldn't I use a bathroom switch style thing with a card? Um, theme hospital. What do you mean? Um, you mean uh, the the dangly bit that goes on the end? Uh, yeah, you you could do something. I can't do. There'd be no point in doing stuff with the bit that the code goes into at the top because nobody's going to look up at the ceiling but um, for the yeah, for the dangly bit um, I've sort of looked at those before because you can get you can get wooden ones and you can get them also as curtain poles wooden ones as well it's essentially the same thing really um, but they're um, I'm trying to you, you, you don't have a lot of room to do anything on on one you know because well i mean if i just pick this is a pen holder uh but you know let's say let's say you've got something that size well i suppose you can do something on, on there i mean at worst you can just do geometric patterns but uh or you know something like that but i suppose you could get something on there and if you do it right you could almost do um like a a panoramic 360 panoramic thing but doing it so if, you know instead of it being around you you go around it all the way around something like that you know I don't know small cottage a tree pathway uh, you know and you, you gradually come back on a on the other side of the pathway which comes back to the cottage or something like that as you turn it around hmm. could do. the smaller ones would probably not be so good could maybe do something like a tree on them um, which reminds me. I'll tell you what I did find the other day, which I've got as well, and I'm just trying to think of. I've got one of these. I've got one of these already. Um, I did try doing some pyrography on one of these, but a little tiny. I think they're meant to be draw pulls, but if I can get into the bag. Ziplock bags are great until you want to get into them, and then you can't always do so. Anyway. A little tiny, well, they're about an inch across, but wooden buttons. And I have done just something on here as simple as just like you know, like I did on the um, on the African scene, just like a tree on there. But you could do a, a small stylized cottage perhaps just something 
Um, I'm guessing they're meant to uh, to sort of you know, have a screw driven into the back of them to be like a draw pull or I don't know glued onto something. So I mean that's that. I, I, I quite often I'll see wooden things like that, and I go uh, and I'll when I can afford it, I'll I'll sort of just pick them up and just buy one or two just to see what I can do with them. Um, which is why you know that's the, the door hangers uh, I got these I got I've got some uh, small wooden leaves well uh, they're about five or six inches by about th um, three or four inches wide they seem like a good wooden blank to do some pyrography on as well but uh, I, I do like experimenting so things like that and be nice to be able to uh, for them to be a little bit commercial so that I can cover some of the costs of um, of doing it yeah they would be finished they'd need sanding off and um, uh, and then re-varnishing afterwards which might be interesting because they're that's the way in which they're finished might be part of the safety certificate the CE marking on them Yeah, post it. <laughs> post it again if you like. <laughs> but advertise it. <laughs> Why wouldn't I say that? <laughs> oh dear. Right, I need to put some mortar between the uh, the bricks, but um, I don't want it to actually compete with the stones. Even though there is low contrast between it and the um, and the stones, uh, if if they're too close to each other, it'll just look like a white sort of mess. So I kind of need to put something in there because you don't don't really want the black. The black areas, but um, this is where I sort of have to learn, if you like, what what works well and what doesn't. And when I tried to fill it in too much, it didn't fantastically work very well. Or I didn't think this area around here works particularly well. It looks. Yeah. It almost looks too much, I suppose. If when all the others, uh, when I sort of lighten up some of the others as well, that possibly doesn't look too bad. It kind of does look like mortar between the stones. Just this one area around here is is what I did. What I've already sort of when I tried put in lighter mortar. So, hmm, but I'm just playing. <laughs> oh, yes, by all means, Cry, thank you very much. That's most kind of you to uh, to look. I'll uh, I will take a look. Unfortunately, I'm at, I'm at the point now where um, what I've got to do is I've, I've uh, I'm going to have to work with what I've got, but I, but yeah, and, and then um, uh, build up enough cash to be able to buy something like uh, like that, and then uh, and then you know 
sell those to, to make more cash to be able to do more get a start the snowball rolling I suppose at some point now um, Fear Reaper what I'm gonna actually have to do is um, is is carve actually carve something like that out of uh, a block of wood aren't I actually do that do the, carve the lettering in some way some way shape or form it's fairly easy with a bandsaw or a, or a coping saw to do but that sort of is the easy way out it'd be nice to be able to i don't know hmm. I mean that's the easy way out of starting anyway. No matter if, if whatever whatever else got done with uh, with the carving, I've got some. Um, I do have some lengths of uh, basswood. I think it's basswood. Sort of one one and a half inch thick. So I'd have to think of think of uh, some way in which to um, pretty pretty it up to make it worth carving it rather than just a you know doing it doing it with a bandsaw but uh, mm, all sorts of ideas now so it's, it's it's interesting it's been a real it's been a quite a nice um, evening so far just lots of ideas from art you know, and, and uh, Grier there who's got um, uh, quite a, he's a relative treasure trove of ideas tonight <laughs> All the way from uh, wax and various uses of wax uh, in art, all the way up to um, doing stuff with switch plates. Hmm. Uh, I want some more stone on top of this. That's. Hmm. Put something fairly large in. Now things like cottages like this are actually, you see and they're built using dry stone walling type, type techniques. I'm sure at one time in the past Things like this would have been done dry stone wall technique, and and mortar might not have been used originally, but you know it's got added over the years. The trick with uh, dry stone walling, if anybody's ever tried it, the trick with dry stone walling is to build it in layers. So if you put a big stone on, um, you know, like uh, something like I've just drawn a, well this one sort of looks really big. The ones you put next to it, you try and level it out. And then you, when you put another layer of stones on top, you try and go over the gaps, but keep it keep the layer level. And if you end up putting a really big one on, uh, you might just use that to span two layers. But the trick is always to keep things level if you can. There's a, another useless bit of information on this channel. See, not only do you get to know about art, you get to know about dressed and walling. <laughs> sometimes, it, it, when you see it, sometimes it is almost like art in its own right. The way they, they put all those stuff together, and it stands up and it doesn't knock over or blow over or anything. Um, they're quite amazing. Hmm. 
I'm guessing actually I'm uh, here I am waxing on about dry stone walls and of course it's, I suspect quite a few of you have probably never seen anything like that but um, um, up in Yorkshire in the UK which is where I am uh, and sort of the Yorkshire Dales and the moorlands and things um, dry stone walls are, are quite common things to see on, on roadsides and in fields of course because that was the only medium that was around the the, the stone was collected locally and built into the walls and generally speaking it was collected off the fields often uh, and, and built um, into the walls to, to enclose the animals and mortar was not something that they had around at the time so that's where the dry stone walling certainly in in my neck of the woods uh, comes about because it was the only only way to, to achieve the objective history as well <laughs> um, I kind of feel like we do a different bit but most of this is going to be wall So I am just dotting around a bit, I'm just filling in what would be the side of the window really. Um, and again, I don't really want to outline the stones if I can avoid it. I mean I've kind of done that down here. Um, it's not bad, it just means I've got to make sure I incorporate the outline. But I really want to... Like I do with the pyrography, and that is not not outline things. I really want to sort of, you know, take the whatever it is up to the edge, so the the texture, whatever it is I'm doing, of like a stone, take it up to the edge of the stone and stop, which is how it happens in real life. You know, you don't get the line around the stone. Um, What I'm wondering is whether to put another bar in this window. Or do what I'm about to do, which is bring the thatch down a little bit. Like that. <laughs> which solves the problem. Right, so um, so I've got some sort of stone edge sort of stuff kind of like there. Uh, we could do with having a sill. Which reminds me, I need a capstone over the top of the... So am I going to see... At this sort of angle, how am I going to see... Yeah, a little bit. I am just tall enough to see that. What I was um, checking the reference image for, and sort of trying to judge, is whether to see the windowsill. Because, of course, the, the window is a, um, a cutting or, or a space through the wall, uh, which means you've got a flat bit on the bottom, um, which the window itself rests on is sort of the, the the bottom of the opening 
you actually have one at the top as well um, and I was working out whether from the angle that I'm, this is drawn at whether you'd actually see that windowsill so you're looking down on it you can see the, the, the bottom of the window um, or whether you're looking up on it and you just see the edge and uh, looking at my reference image and sort of looking at this um, my eye line is sort of about here so I am looking down on this and looking up at that so I am going to see the windowsill a little bit and now I just need to therefore decide where I'm stood because if I was stood over here for example then what I will I won't see this edge of a windowsill but I would see that edge quite clearly here I'd sort of see a bit of well this edge but and most of the windowsill but not this edge once I get to looking here I'm going to see both sides of the window and quite a lot of the windowsill so that's why I've just my next decision is where am I going to stand because you don't actually have to stand in the middle of the picture and sometimes it's a nice idea not to stand in the middle of the picture. I've almost drawn this, the way I've sort of drawn this. Mm, that's kind of the side of the window. I'm sort of seeing that one. I, I reckon that the photograph that um, is that reference, and I've kind of subconsciously done the same thing where where this red thing is 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 where it was taken from and then probably somebody's because um, it looks quite square on so I suspect what they've done is it's been a wider picture that somebody's cropped down um, so that this 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 fills the frame interesting and okay unlike the photograph I've done these three windows at the same height but in the photograph this one is higher up What I'm doing is, is sort of the windowsill with fictitious lines which would go towards the vanishing point. So you get a perspective um, and the vanishing point is obviously way over in the background somewhere. Where do they point at? Actually the vanishing point I've actually got about right. The horizon's there roughly and so I've got the vanishing point about right <laughs> which was pure coincidence I just did it because it looked it looked about right so by doing the you know doing the lines in that towards that vanishing point I sort of sort of give your eye the impression that it's flat not you know, I'm not I'm not doing the side of the house I'm doing the flat bit of the sill crikey 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 <laughs> I'm sorry you I'm sure you get that all the time I'm probably quite tired of that by now um, but it's new to me uh, welcome good evening um, you just came in yep yeah. um, how long have I been working on this one well I started this one, it's Tuesday today, I'm now trying to remember if I started this yesterday or Sunday night.
Guys, can you remember when I started this? <laughs> I can't actually remember. Um, I think we started this on Sunday nights, I think. Um, there's probably about, well, I was going to say about five hours work, but there's about five hours duration, of which there's probably about three hours of work <laughs> in, that, uh, in that time. I'm not quite sure um, how much... Uh, time there is uh, there is actually in it because as you'll notice if you're here for a little bit I have a tendency to stop when I get interested in talking too much which is sort of what's happening at the moment uh, Matt Panda 6622 hi this is amazing thank you very much and I'm also amazing okay thank you very much <laughs> and I have a very gifted talent so keep it up uh, well, I would say that's uh, kind of you to recognise that. I hope I live up to that uh, assessment. Um, two days ago. Yeah, I, brain's gone, you see. I'm an old man. Um, I remember we did some jewellery last... Was it last night? I can't even remember we did the jewellery last night or the night before now. Oh dear, I am going really crackers. Uh, La Long... No long guys uh, 777 hello welcome to the studio um, we well nice of you all to drop in um, this is um, as it as it says somewhere scraper board on screen um, we're doing rough rough outline ish sort of work at the moment main large sort of blocks and fairly dim colouring so that we can get the whole picture in and then decide what needs to get brighter or, or or different textures on it do do other things as well for those of you that are watching um, then um, we don't just do scraper board uh, I do carving pyrography scraper board uh, jewellery which is chain mail but most people think of arm if I say that uh, Punchcraft, and they're just the five I do at the moment. Um, did jewelry last night? Okay, thanks, uh, Gray. It's it just um, sometimes the days just merge into one. It's because I've been to work today. I've been to work. I've been into an office to work today, and that kind of throws my um, uh, perceptions out because I kind of like I haven't I haven't been in the office here at at home today, um, and I lost track of when things were um okay you missed the jewelry stream there'll be another one um uh Gryer, and especially if i just feel like doing something different one night but possibly at the weekend um i'm not drop oh i've dropped a few frames um looking at it theme hospital but not uh, not very many in the past hour and a half, 193 frames, which um, Fear Reaper will understand just how little that is. <laughs> um, right, I shall get back on with doing some of this so that these people that have just dropped in will be able to um, see some of what I'm actually doing. Uh, okay, that doorway goes up certainly above so that's going to want to go a bit higher up there now if that's the if that's going to be the edge of a door then we're going to have stones so if that's going to be the edge of the door let's put in a little bit of the interior floor from the doorway so that's sort of going to be the bottom of the door So the door's going to be hmm, well it's quite a thin door I guess so we're probably going to be about I don't know make about there now you probably can't see that mark but I have just made enough of a mark to uh, to see because what I want to do is stop on that mark 
Now we need the front of the house. There's, there's going to be. I need to come forward a little bit. So I kind of want very fine marks here because I don't want it very bright. And ultimately, I kind of want it to fade into into black. Um, perspective is a bit out, but that's not bad. <laughs> if you um, feel like um, uh, letting the uh, new people that joined see your um, your work. Uh, Fear Reaper, I am, of course, I'm not going to say no. Fear Reaper made uh, a, a really nice animation for me, completely um, completely surprised me earlier today uh, with uh, with his work. He does uh, 3D animations and um, he took the opportunity to learn, uh, uh, start to learn a new skill of, of camera movements in 3D animations as well uh, and, and produced well, what I think is quite an amazing um, short uh, animation. Would you call it a film? Filmlet, but it's uh, yeah. Take a take a look at guy uh, that guys. I think it's um, I think it's quite amazing. Right. So it looks like they've used fairly large stones around the doorway. They've probably done that for a reason, so it seems like it's probably a good idea to copy that reason and put some fairly large stones in. Um, so let's just hint at them being where they are. That way, I can sort of see where I want to put textures. Don't want to actually draw an outline around them. I kind of have a couple of places down here, but it makes it harder to add textures sometimes if you uh, actually sort of apply an outline. Or something like that and then we'd have smaller ones let's do something on the end of the building so that we actually get to see where the end of the building is which seems like a good idea to me um, I'm kind of expecting yeah looking at the reference picture it kind of looks like they've used big stones there as well so there you so yeah yeah fear reaper uh, posted the link again yeah um, in, take a look at that and enjoy it. I find it uh, an amazing animation. Now we're seeing seeing the edge, so. Unlike bricks, we're not going to have solid, uh, nice dead straight corners. We're going to have sort of fairly rounded edge stones.
So I'm not uh, I'm just sort of dotting things in. So fairly random. I'm not uh, not trying for anything, any sort of particular shape or pattern or anything like that. I think what we'll do is we'll stop it there and we'll bring the thatch down a little bit over the top of it. Like that. Which then serves as having to fill in some more bricks up the top. Um, I've got a window there again. I'm going to have, we've got a Again, we've got the window so she's going to come out to about there and then we're going to have some stones up the side of the window uh, or the window opening which I'm sort of just doing some light dotting in uh, it's going to come all the way up there now they're going to be in shadow up the top there I've also got a lintel Which I've kind of not done right, but I know that. So I'm pointing out mistakes, you see. Shouldn't really do that as an artist, but um, part of the reason of doing things like this and pointing out mistakes is if there's anybody watching, they get to learn. Um, the angle at which I'm looking at this, uh, and my my I am kind of stood here. Heads about here in terms of height, so I'd be looking up at that, so I'd see the underneath of the lintel. Well, what I've done is I've drawn the edge, uh, and the edge is coming over the window frame. I can sort of put the window frame in, which will half mitigate the mistake, but I should really be able to see the underneath, the top surface of of the stone that goes across the top of the window sill. Um, and or the window opening. Uh, generally, it's called a lintel in the UK, but it's it's a stone. It carries the weight of any other stone above it, because of course there's a big gap underneath now. So it sits on on stones either side of the window opening, goes across the top to carry the weight of um, not only stones above it, but any roof joists or anything that's sat over the top of that gap. And you get them over door, well over any opening actually. So windows, doors, cutouts, anything like that. Um, so I can I could sort of cheat, as I've mentioned, by just indicating that we can see the top. Top wood, wooden bar of the window. So it gives us a slight impression of looking up towards the towards the lintel. So I'm kind of cheating. I'm stood a bit high, really. So, but what the heck? That's what I'm doing. I'm learning. And so that's. So I'm going to want uh, the lower windowsill. It's going to be round about there. Now what's so it's, it's in shadow basically some of this so I'll have to remember that but then let's put some uh, some brickwork in. Well brickwork it's stone work I suppose. So I'm just going to dot some stuff in. I, um, when I'm being tentative, um, I'm not really sure about what I'm doing, which is, you know, 
um, scraper board. This is my third ever piece. Um, I like to sort of work very tentatively, <laughs> sort of just uh, you know, not really go too confident into a piece. Um, just do, you know, as you can see me sort of just dotting things in, which then gives me the opportunity to sort of, I won't say erase them, although now that I've got the ink, um, I could well do so. And if uh, just to explain to uh, people who may be watching and don't uh, necessarily know, um, scraper board or this type of scraper board is a card backing. It's porcelain clay, white porcelain clay laid over the top, then covered in Indian ink. Expose the clay by you scraping it with a scraping away the Indian ink with a sharp tool. You might kind well. You, you might kind of think you can't, uh, if you make a mistake, you're all stuffed. Maybe. Uh, because you scrape the ink away, it kind of, you can't glue it back down. But what you can do is replace the ink. Now you can, you can do that with certain black paints that will match and certain um, uh, paint type markers. Uh, will match the black but um, what you can also do is buy like a pigment ink or even Indian ink for that matter which I'm guessing is what one of these is um, now this the black in here actually won't match this one quite as as well it's it's designed for another board another manufacturer and it'll be a slightly different black but um, basically you um, take that put that back over the the line that you've created by accident or is now no longer required and it turns it black but too much on you'll see it but you know if it's like just a, a small line or something like that you won't you won't so it'll call it black hides the white job done um, but generally speaking you'll then maybe scratch over it again because it was a line in the wrong direction say and you instead of going that way you wanted to go that way so if you're going to scratch over it again you just won't notice the correction so you can you can correct this stuff the other inks are in that I've got here uh, and this arrived today was for me to try out you can color scraper board obviously once you've got the white if you put like an ink a transparent paint or a transparent thing over the top of the white it will show through that transparent color that you've put down so if I put you know, green over the top of this it would show green uh, if you put green over the black it would be quite hard to see um, it's the white that makes it visible the white backing so I got some of uh, some of this to maybe try putting some grass in for example down the bottom here scrape it put the green over maybe do some more scraping over the top of that don't know we'll see um, um, just possibly you know we've got some well red violety red here could maybe put a couple of flowers in something like that so I got that uh, these today to experiment with. And you're going to get to see the experiment, I think. But that those were actually um, the black, especially is, is actually there to match a board that I got from another manufacturer. And um, actually, when I look at this, I know it's got plastic on the front, but this board does not look a lot actually smoother than the one I'm working on. And it's a very slightly different colour, even through the plastic, it's um, which makes it hard. But it looks it looks like a different shade of black, which so I'm assuming the ink in that bottle is matched, but I'd still happily try it on this. Worst is it gets filed in the round portfolio. It's a practice piece. Um so Two, two toys, if you want to call them toys, that arrived today in the post.
Yeah, then, if that's so, we're going to need another stone in there, so that's going to be a little one. Because what I might not do is, um, I might not do the whole stone of everything, I might just you know do a few like down the edge here and there, maybe the odd one around the window. So, you sort of it's a bit of a big hint that it's a stone cottage but I don't actually have to put every single stone in um, you can just sort of hint at them being there so you do little patches everywhere um, that's one quite valid technique for doing something like this don't know whether I'll do that or will I fill them all in you kind of can play about with it a little bit so you can do that sparse detailed technique see if you like it and if it doesn't you can fill the rest in so it's it's not um, it's really not a case of it's either one or the other you can do one see if you like it and if you don't move it on to the other I'm guessing fear reaper everybody must have been totally stunned by that um, piece of work because they've all gone quiet <laughs> Now one thing with um, dry stone walling is, is uh, I've drawn like an L-shaped um, rock here. It's um, not actually something that they usually do. You, walk, you don't often find that sort of thing in a dry stone wall. You know, they won't, for example, uh, cut or break bits off a stone usually to, to do that. So. Um, you'd find you know, smaller stones jammed in places to uh, to make that sort of transition. So, having just remembered that, I've just uh, changed the edge of that L-shaped block of stone, so it's no longer L-shaped. make that a nice big block there because otherwise it starts to look too much like brick and the one thing we don't want is it to look like brick Very nearly did again. And sort of have done again anyway. Ah well. It's really hard to uh, to be sort of reasonably um, uh, random about this.
It's sort of like the, um, I've almost done like a pattern that you'd see on a modern house <laughs> where it's pseudo dry stone um, rather than actual dry stone. And that's where things do start to line up because they're using sort of a fixed number of variations of stone or well, stone cladding. Hmm. some patterning uh, now let's um, now what I'm going to do is actually sort of put uh, a little bit of texture onto these these stones I've just done here So you might may or may not be able to see, but what I've just, just sort of done, and still it's really hard to see. You know, this is one of these things which is extremely obvious to me, but here you can maybe just see some spidery sort of lines. And, um, it's a little bit out of focus. You might just be able to see them, but um, they really stand out here. <laughs> but I'm guessing... Uh, don't know. The camera's just not picking them up quite well enough. I'm trying to pick a few different types of strokes just to give some actual pattern variation as you, uh, you're looking at them uh, when you're looking at them from uh, from fairly close on quite how successful that's going to look at the idea basically is just try and give an idea that they're different stones they're not all the same thing they're not all a slate or something like that I 
and again it's trying to be random about this so using not using it's really hard for the humans to be random so you know you sort of go oh i can't put it there because it's underneath so i'll put it over here but it's diagonal um because it looks and you're never really random Now when they add the stone walling of course there's no right way up or wrong way up for a stone so if you sort of see any texture in the stone it's quite possible that it you know it could be laid going up the wall rather than along the wall. So there you go for your reaper yeah it is um, they are they are still completely stunned by your work. Now that's a compliment. So there you go. Seems like, I was about to say, seems like I can't actually, um, get any people to, um, uh, good people into saying anything. Uh, Huggies Pants, good evening, welcome to the studio. Uh, Jerry Springer, mate, good evening, welcome to the studio. Uh, Chazinator also. So as you're uh, now within the studio you will of course be nice and polite and uh, uh, respectful to everybody that's here. And uh, Chazinator, hi, welcome. Sounds like you, you guys are playing, uh, uh, was it? Um, about to say Cluedo. It is Cluedo. Remember, no swearing. There's no need to swear. I am sure that um, you are. You have a better grasp of language than that. Um, no, I don't need to, uh, Chazinator. You, um, uh, anything that's sharp will work as a scraper board tool. Literally, anything that's sharp. Uh, a knife, a bit of metal, a pin. You don't need to even uh, specifically shop online for all things. Um, there are tools available. Um, most of them, if not all of them, are suitable for the jobs that... Uh, people say so if it says scraper board on it then that's what the tool is for and that fairly obviously isn't a scraper board tool I don't think
nearly. That's yeah, okay. No, because I'm not a professional, so you can't have a professional opinion. And if you're paying £20 for it, then you're wasting your money and uh, it's not worth buying. So um, you ought to have known that. It's fairly obvious. So I think you are trying to be somewhat not very good for this stream. So. Uh, Chazinator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to time you out for a little while. Because not only does that link not look like anything to do with scraper board, um, £20 is not something that you'd pay and it would be extremely obvious that you wouldn't pay that sort of thing. <laughs> Grier is perfectly correct. Grier is perfectly correct. Standard rules apply. Do not click any links from anybody that you do not know and trust. And they have uh, effectively verified for you that those links are um, what they purport them to be. You know, especially in mediums such as Twitch or emails and things like that. Uh, true uh, layers are, but you know, it's. Um, It's uh, it's coming home time from school, so. Okay. I swapped the wrong nib earlier. Never mind. This particular nib creates a thicker scrape well, as you might see it it shows it up brighter just because it's a thicker it's a thicker scrape
And for some reason, they, um, no, they they seem perhaps seem to think if they come into um, creative that they won't get banned. They find out that they're wrong. I, uh, I've been giving you, you've got to have uh, had a wide angle view for a while. I'm getting closer to the end of the stream actually, to be honest, but um, what I'll do is I'll just zoom in a little bit on the area that I'm working in and I'll focus it in a second just to give you a little bit of a more. I'm not particularly um, working on an area for any particular reason other than I just felt like working in this area. Uh, can I get that to focus? The camera's having a little bit of trouble focusing on that because of, uh, my guess is because it's made up of very fine scratches and it's um, confusing the sensor a little bit. Because of uh, because of that, but uh, this might actually work. Well, I was going to say it might work a little bit better to give you a top-down uh, view on it, but um, we'll maybe try that out next uh, on on a future stream. I'm just um, just adding some texture to some of these, uh, to, well, to all of these stones that are just around here. Layers are good evening. Um, okay, have a good evening. If uh, if you've got a headache, then yeah, go get rid of it. Uh, don't hang around just uh, for the sake of it. It uh, you know, go relax, let the medication do its job. Um, I get headaches, I get migraines, so um, yeah, uh, they're not pleasant. Um, I tend to take medication these days when I feel that I might get something rather than wait until it does apply because um, some migraine headaches are extremely painful. So um, have a good evening and hope you feel better soon. Uh, Stank Hill or Stank Gill, one, two, three, four, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the chat room, yes. So it doesn't take much in the way of uh, scratch marks or um, even if I'm using like this which is a slightly thicker tool or slightly creates a slightly thicker line when I when I scratch and uh, to get quite a light um, light surface uh, a light texture off of it and I switch on the same stone to using the other tool that I've got in my hand which creates somewhat finer lines you should be able to sort of see this top corner looks quite a bit brighter now what I'm doing here is creating little tiny fine scratches And doing that will allow me to sort of extend some of those, add extra scratches to sort of make uh, you know, 
the rough surface texture, texture of the stones uh, as I develop this more. So I've got a, you know, a light patch top left uh, and uh, as I do more you know more of it I can sort of create shapes on the surface a little bit like I've done a little bit of light down here. I just wish this camera would focus. Um, Captain Doby, well hello also, welcome to you this evening, nice to see you in the studio again. Yeah, I, I, um, I sometimes cry, not so much these days because I do take preventative medication now as well, but sometimes I don't realise that I've got a headache, and it, uh, well a migraine, and it just suddenly sort of I will say appears and when you think back you you know it hasn't um, and it, it, it's built up over time but because I've been doing something else I don't notice it um, and then then you know sometimes I'll recognize the triggers because I, I have one I have one specific set of triggers which is I'm hot I'm thirsty and I'm tired all those three together and, I, and almost certainly I'll get a, get a migraine. Um, but other times you sort of, um, especially some of the odd ones, um, I quite often will, if I've got a migraine, I get motion sick. So if I'm, if I'm playing the game, I don't know, um, even something as simple as Minecraft or, or ETS2, but you know maybe a, something like a shooting game, uh, I don't know, Doom or something like that, you know, Doom 2, Doom 3. I don't play any of the, the modern warfare ones, but... And I suddenly find myself feeling sick, motion sick. And, and I've got a, and I've got a migraine. <laughs> and it's kind of like, i got to stop. Um, but... Uh, I, don't any, I don't get any of the classic ones, so I don't, I don't get migraines from coffee. Or cheese or anything like that in fact if I drink if I have a migraine drinking coffee for me helps reduce the effect a bit weird I'm lucky though I don't don't often these days have the uh, crawling under a desk um, type migraines I've had those before and literally at work I've crawled. I've crawled under my desk at work. Put my head under the. So I've gone in the, under the chair. Well, if you like, put my head underneath the um, bit, usually where the uh, drawers are, if they don't go all the way to the bottom, because it's darker there. And I've gone to sleep under the desk for uh, for two hours, two or three hours, because uh, I've, I've had such a bad migraine that I can't possibly drive. So the only and and you can't stay awake; it's so painful. So the only other alternative is crawl under the desk. It does surprise the odd people when they try and push a chair under or something like that. But yeah, if you can't, I I I do have some other triggers, I guess. Well, I assume triggers, but um, I don't know if they are. If I do actually have other triggers because um, I do just randomly get some sometimes um, as, as you uh, suggest there so whether there has or is a trigger I don't know um, from that point of view I'm just trying to think I mean I, I, I had a headache tonight probably because I'm dehyd slightly dehydrated I haven't had much to drink today um, never do when I go into the office and I quite often come back with a, a headache probably because I've not had enough to, to drink so it doesn't help but um, yeah it's a real pain if you can't figure if you get them frequently and you can't figure out the triggers then uh, I used to I used to regularly get them probably every uh, every few days so I started um, a few years ago now I started taking uh, some preventative medicine um, and I very rarely get one now I'm glad to say um, a lot of mine though were actual pain migraines uh, um, 
I didn't have some with, uh, for those people that don't know with migraines migraines don't have to give you pain um, they uh, migraines typically have other effects as well like uh, disturbed vision so you might see flashing lights or jazzy lines or halos around things you can just feel sick um, you can get weird feelings in different bits of your body um, I very occasionally get a feeling in one arm that feels like it's really weak but isn't so you get all sorts of weird things um, and you know you don't always have to have the pain as I say you can just have um, uh, disrupted vision or something like that uh, which is caused by migraines yeah and I hope you have as well Gaia they are not pleasant things to have unfortunately people um, people that have never experienced one just kind of think of them as being sort of a bad headache and it's not quite the same thing my wife used to think of them like that until she started getting them herself Uh, well, it's now half past ten, so I think that's going to be enough for today. Let me see if I can give you a better view of what... Um, kind of just doing that sort of thing. Uh, no, no real detail at the moment, just sort of filling in. Um, we'll have to, I'll have to fill something in between the, those blocks at some point, but um, just filling in shapes i'm trying really hard not to be as regular as that looks <laughs> really difficult but um and we sort of started did some over here as well and then we'll we you know once once i've got a few in or maybe i don't know when we'll do all of it or just just certain area you know, a few areas like like i've done currently uh, we'll sort of add more texture in a bit like this sort of area here so it starts to look more stone like with you know maybe a bit of mortar between it or something like that and you can start to see sort of a almost a 3d shape coming in around here so we'll you know that's that'll be one thing that we'll we'll start to do with the stones um, to, to just to improve the um, the image so they're not just flat objects which the rest around kind of look just like flat objects somewhat at the moment slightly sort of different some sort of slight different textures this one diagonally for example just makes it look different to something like that um, and some of the other marks that are around um, you know this one these you see these stones here kind of look slightly different to each other because they the marks that I've made are going in different directions. So that's what I'm trying to do. Whether you know, I guess you guys judge the success of what I'm trying to do as uh, as I will. But let me zoom out a little bit so you can get an idea of the whole thing. Try and keep the glare off, but. So it's, it's quite dark at the moment. In fact, supposedly at the moment, you can almost look at it. It's a bit like a moonlit scene. It actually looks, again, different on camera to what it looks like in person. Uh, the camera does seem to um, enhance the contrast between things more than I'm seeing here, which is good. 
Um, I'll have to try standing back and uh, and looking at it from a few feet away. But you should at the moment almost be getting an idea of it. It's sort of, it is sort of like a moonlit scene at the moment. Uh, with sort of you know very dark lighting and you know just a bit of light on the uh, on the windows. And uh, yeah, a little bit of light creeping around here, bit a bit on the the edges of the uh, thing, the um, window, and you should almost start to see a three D sort of idea. You should almost see this this bit of the building standing out, standing proud of the um, the rest of it that's behind. And um, if you're not, I'm not quite doing my job properly. But hopefully you'll see more of it as, uh, as as time allows. And one thing that I'm starting to look quite, as I'm quite proud of, is just that texture across the top there. I kind of kind of is standing out 3D to me as though um, as they would be in real life. They're uh, sort of caps of uh, reed over the top. As, as, almost as a decoration. This one doesn't look quite right to me. I might have to change that a little bit, but we shall see. Anyway, guys, as I mentioned, time for me to have a rest. I was up really early this morning, so I'm probably going to go to bed early tonight. Um, but thank you all for being around. It has been extremely interesting Graya uh, Fear Reaper Fear Reaper thank you very much for that animation Graya thank you very much for that treasure trove of ideas um, I am going to write them down um, maybe we'll try them on stream uh, at some point in the future so thank you uh, thank you for that and everybody else who's uh, uh, chatted and said anything in in stream fantastic to have you all around um, I'm going to uh, remind anybody that's um, watching and isn't following I'm not quite sure there is anybody but just in case um, I of course will appreciate it very much if you were to follow me um, you will then of course get notified by email from Twitch when I uh, go live next I'll move that out of the way so I can say hello to you what you ought to do I suppose at this point is blow that camera up to almost full view maybe next time um, so thank you um, if you follow me if you don't want to follow me you're quite welcome to follow me on Twitter at least that way you'll be notified when I go live um, as the guys who have heard this before know I'm about to say I tweet when I go live not when I have my breakfast so <laughs> uh, any tweets will be uh, either stream or art related um, so you are relatively safe from me uh, but otherwise, if you'd just like to try and catch me on my next stream, which will be tomorrow evening, I do stream roughly seven nights a week from about the same time, 8pm in the UK, 1900 hours GMT. And if you want to take a look at your clock, if you're in a different time zone, subtract two and a half hours, that would be 8pm in the UK, and it will be that time roughly uh, tomorrow night and uh, each subsequent evening as well. We'll be carrying on certainly probably for a few nights doing uh, some more of this scraper board uh, and once this piece is, is finished we'll move on to another art form not quite sure yet what it will be we have uh, punch craft uh, available to do and some jewelry that we could do so uh, we'll see how uh, how that comes about those will be the next two in the sequence I may even leave it up to you guys We'll see. Thank you all. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.